Just wanted to cover a couple things with you this morning over the color wheel. I'm sure that some of you have uh, pretty much covered all of it. Probably have all the primaries and secondaries and probably some of the intermediates or maybe all the intermediates. And that's great. But I just wanted to demonstrate a little bit on this and go into the next uh, idea and concept of doing the values of a color. So the reason why we put the the colors the way they are right in the middle is because on either side we're going to change the value of that color. Now that involves a little bit of work and we're going to get into that in just a minute but I'll just let you see how I did the wheel. I'm going to speed this up and see if I can't get that to go a little quicker for you. So here you can see in the video that we're work, that I'm working on the intermediates. Now just, just remember that intermediates are made by mixing a primary and a secondary. Always remember the rule of mixing when working with a color that's lighter and darker. The value's a lot lighter than the other. I always start with the lighter color. And then just add a little bit of the darker color to it. Make sure that uh, you can work to the color you're getting. If you add too much dark, it's going to take a lot more of the lighter to make up and try to get where you want to be. So just remember that little rule. All right, I'm finishing up the color wheel, and now I'm going to be getting into mixing tints. Now, tints and shades are where you use your white and black. And you can kind of see the palette. I didn't get it quite on camera there, but what I'm trying to do is mix a tint of red. So I'm using the white, adding tiny little bit of red until I get where I want to get. And you can see that it makes a pink. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, at this case, I just added a little bit of red. I'm doing the lightest value of red. Uh, that I can do and then I'll go back and add a little bit more red to make the value change for the next circle. Just try to make sure that as you're working with your values that you at least see the difference between them. I'm not asking you to be perfectly spaced out but just try to get try to see that each of the circles is a piece of the pie has a different value. And there you can pretty much tell that I did that. So the same thing happens with the shades. You're just adding black and listen, add tiny, tiny amounts of black. Now one of the things you're going to notice too is when you get to the darker color, especially around in the purples, is that as you start adding black, it almost as indistinguishable. You can't really tell what's going on in there. But uh, you can see a little difference once it dries out. It'll dry out a little lighter and once the wet is off of the paint you can see the color a little better. Now you see that I made the shades of yellow there. That yellow is just nasty. Uh, the black in tempera has blue in it. So that's kind of why you got the little green going on there. And that's about it. Just a couple other notes here would be about cleaning your brushes out well. Making sure you get them back in your box. And then make sure you clean your palettes out uh, for the next person.